so today we're going to talk about training our hamstrings um, and more specifically we're going to talk about hamstring flexion so if you are working with clients outside of a gym in a group exercise environment you know if you have your wild strong classes you're always going to find that certain movements are harder to hit than others for example vertical pulling is going to be one of the hardest movements uh, to incorporate outside especially before your clients have pull-ups even things like negatives and everything like that can be really, really challenging for new clients uh, if they just don't have the strength to even maintain any kind of eccentric strength as they are doing that negative. Similar with hamstring flexion. Now with your hamstrings, um, one of the things we need to think about when we talk about hamstrings is to remember that they're a biarticulate muscle. So if you look at this nice little diagram I have right here, imagine you got your pelvis right here, uh, that's your femur, um, that's the head of your femur going to acetabulum, that's the femur, this is your knee joint right here. Um, your hamstrings, because they're biarticulate, they cross over two sets of joints. So if you look up here, your hamstrings up here, uh, they attach to the ischial tuberosity, which is sort of like the bottom part of your pelvis area, um, and that will help uh, control hip movement. But then they come down to either side below the femur and attach the bottom part of the knee joint. Um, so because they cross over a joint here and across over a joint here, they're biarticulate, which means they can do two different things. In this case, um, your hamstrings can work as hip extensors, thinking about how we use them in uh, deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, etc. cetera. Um, but because they cross over here, they can also work as knee flexors. Um, and that means that when we're training hamstrings, it's very, very, very easy when you're picking up heavy things and working outside and doing all kinds of movement for life and functional movements to train your hamstrings to work as hip extensors. And the vast majority of hamstring training that you're gonna get in this environment is gonna be through the form of hip extension. The challenge, uh, the challenge here is to figure out how we can work knee flexion. Now, uh, the reason, well, not the reason, but hamstrings work like this, and that's a key component of when we're running our gait. Um, and actually just running and sprinting can get a lot of really, really good hamstring um, uh, usage in both that active flexion and hip extension. So it's part of that circular gait that we get when we're running. But if you're not doing lots of uh, running and sprinting with your clients and you're trying to find a way to work in hamstring flexion, it can be a really, really tricky thing to do. Um, and it can be hard to do it eccentrically or concentrically. So what I mean is if we're talking about hamstring uh, flexion concentrically, it's the act of actively flexing your hamstring. So overcoming whatever resistance you have, whereas eccentric would be when you put resistance uh, on your body and it wants to stay in this flexion position, but gradually it's overcome by the external forces and you have a controlled negative movement as you slowly move into extension while actively trying to maintain flexion. So the solution, or maybe an exercise that's really uh, been in vogue recently and for good reasons is the Nordic hamstring uh, curl. And the Nordic hamstring curl is a great exercise, it's really good, popular for a lot of good reasons. But at the same time, um, it's a really advanced movement and most people can't do Nordic hamstring curls, certainly not untrained clients. Uh, you'll see a lot of professional athletes, a lot of high-level athletes who can't do uh, a strict Nordic uh, hamstring curl. And then the other thing to consider is that your limb length ratios and overall athlete size are going to make a big difference as well. So, um, you know, if you have a really long femur and if you have a short uh, tibia, then um, the Nordic hamstring curls are going to be much, much tougher than you than if you have the reverse ratio. Similarly, if you're working with clients who are just really large, it's going to be a really, really tough body weight movement, whereas it might be easier for someone who's much leaner or much smaller overall. Um, and a lot of times when people are teaching the Nordic, um, they try to find scaling options that in the end probably aren't that helpful and uh, can sometimes be uh, disheartening to the people doing them because they feel like they're so far away from getting a meaningful Nordic. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, when we're working with Nordics, okay, you need something to keep your feet in place. And there's lots of fancy things you can do, but there's nothing wrong with a, a log. In this case, we got a spar. 
um, cut it down. It was still green wood. This is probably getting pretty old now. You can see it's got some fungus and mold growing on it. Um, so I wouldn't want to use it forever, but I've tested it and it's strong enough now. And we just found some rocks. So we've got some big stones here. Um, I found some old drainage blocks, which are nice because they have a curve in there. It allows to fit in. Uh, and I uh, just loaded a bunch of rocks. I have it behind two tree trunks and uh, that's good enough for what we need right now. So all I need to do is I need to wedge my feet in. Normally, if you're working with um, outdoor group, you could have people kneel on each other's feet um, or put body weight down here. But for me, this is good enough. Okay, so I've got my feet wedged in. First thing I want to talk about is uh, just how difficult the Nordic is and the standard scaling that we use for a lot of people isn't going to be inappropriate. So if you've got yourself lined up, there we go, nice and tight. Okay, and you're trying to come down with control. All right, we're at that's about as far as I can go. Um, so what I did is I did a flop into a press up. Now, I'm, I'm not great at Nordics, but I do them fairly regularly and I have uh, more control than a lot of people. Um, if you just take someone who's never done this before and they put that much tension, especially eccentric tension on their hamstrings, there's a good chance A, they're gonna have a spasm or something, or B, they're just gonna get to here and they're just gonna flop, okay? And if you're working with clients who don't have a lot of uh, push-up strength, it means that they can't really help themselves much by actively um, contracting their hamstrings. They're not gonna have much of a push up. So they kind of get down here and they kind of come back up again and then they do another one. And it's just sort of disheartening because they feel like they're not really getting much out of the movement. So unless you have someone who has a bit of control that they can actually get some tension in here before they drop and pop themselves back up. But also with the pop up, you know, you can just do a little bit and then the hamstring can take care of the rest. If you're getting almost no meaningful uh, contraction from your hamstrings, then you're literally just flopping into a push-up, getting back up. It's not gonna be a very meaningful movement for a lot of people. So we have to think of ways that we can scale that down. Um, so we have a few options. And uh, number one is the Harap Curl, which is just using leverage. Instead of trying to maintain um, a perfectly extended hips, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bend at the hips while I'm doing this, while I'm doing the hamstring curl. So that means there's going to be movement at my knee joint and probably an isometric um, flexion at my hip joint. So if I go ahead, if I break at the hips now, I've changed my leverage. It can go down there and come back up. And that's a movement that all of a sudden I can get a meaningful work out of. So just adding a bend and then controlling the bend. As you get more advanced, you can open up your hips more. For people who are on the cusp, all of a sudden now, they can get meaningful reps out of this movement. But for a lot of people, that'll be too advanced as well. So we can start looking at isometric work. So you can do an isometric um, hamstring curl, which means that you're not moving much. All I'm gonna do, get it nice and stacked, abs are tight, bum is tight, and I'm just gonna come forward a little bit until I find a tension that is challenging for me, and I just hold it. 10 seconds or so, and then I come back up. That isometric uh, work is going to uh, do a really, really good job of strengthening your hamstrings to get them ready for the eccentric work of the curl. And over time, over a few months, you might find that people can go a little bit further out, 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 and then pulling back. And that's all they need to do. So you can reduce the range of motion and just focus on a isometric hold. Okay, you can change your leverage here um, and uh, get people to do more work that way. You can also do other tricks. One of the things that I was just playing around with was just having a suspension trainer right here. Um, and I was thinking, is there a way that we can use a suspension trainer to help? And I think there is. If you have a suspension trainer set up behind you, so the anchor points behind you while you're down here, if you do this with a partner, it'd be much easier. You just find a place with a good anchor point, attach the uh, suspension trainer, and then your partner can uh, stabilize you while you're doing it. For this, I'd say what I would do is I treat this a lot like an ab wheel. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna squeeze my bum so my hips are open. I'm gonna keep my arms down here so that I'm not tempted to, uh, to change leverage by moving my arm around. And then from here, I'm just gonna come out, kind of pull myself back in, okay? Uh, what makes it tough is if you turn this into a fallout like this, then there's a lot of leverage with moving your hands. So you need to um, you need to find a position 
that feels consistent. If, if you want to, I guess you could start out here, okay, and then just focus on the hamstring curl here. But I feel like that doesn't get me as good engagement as if I come down here and then actively pull myself back in. This will require some experimentation depending on people's limb length. Um, but if you can find a way where they can keep their hands in the same position and then actively pull themselves back with the hamstrings, this could be a really nice movement. You could also just use it as a modified uh, fallout. So um, if you wanted to, you could come out here and try pulling yourself back in like that or just treat it like an ab wheel and coming back in all together. That'll give you a little bit of, uh, of lat work and hamstring work. But I think that this could be a nice way to work on some high rep hamstring uh, flexion work without needing any specialized equipment that you wouldn't normally have outside. Okay, um, if your clients are finding any sort of, uh, you know, tall kneeling hamstring curl, uh, Nordic curl variation too difficult, then we can go back and we can um, try to think of some other movements that are a little bit less challenging. So uh, one option that doesn't look like much, but it really is, is either a standard or quadruped hamstring curl. And this is no external resistance other than just the tightness of your muscles. A lot of people um, are going to have uh, quite tight quads, and a lot of people are probably going to have stronger quads in their hamstrings, especially at the end range of motion. Um, it's like if you think about your uh, bicep sort of curling up here, this part right here, the equivalent on your hamstring, that final squeeze at the end, a lot of people can be very, very weak and they actually don't need any resistance. This is myself included. I found that even just doing these and focusing on the squeeze at the end is really, really challenging. And it's actually humbling how bad your range of motion can be when you're doing these. So um, with this, you just, uh, you can grab something stable, lean up against a tree, get a dowel to support you. And then for the standing one, I'm just gonna come here. And all I'm doing, is I, can, I can lean forward. If I want, I can open up my hips. So my hips are in full extension, so I'm only working through here. And if I just think about smoothly squeezing, so not a quick kick like this, we're not flicking. I'm really smoothly squeezing at the end and relaxing. Squeezing and relaxing, just like that. This doesn't look like much, but if you really focus on the end range of motion, it can be really tough. And it's one of those things that if you do it for a few weeks, you'll find all of a sudden that your range of motion at the end of flexion is much better and that um, you just get much, much more control over the movement. Another option is you can go quadruped. So same idea, come out here, I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna open up, squeeze my bum, I'm gonna go into extension. I'm gonna try to make sure I don't go into too much external rotation because I have a bias there. So I'm gonna bring my knee in and uh, get into more internal rotation. Same thing, I'm just squeezing and relaxing. Squeezing and relaxing. And if you really focus on the squeeze, it's a good movement. And I'll actually shake a little bit at the end. And most of that resistance is just coming uh, from my hamstrings being tight and strong and my hamstr uh, sorry, my quads being tight and strong, my hamstrings being relatively weak at the end. But that squeeze um, will really generate a lot of benefit. So that's another option. Um, if uh, you feel like that's not quite right, then uh, there's two more things I can show you. One of them is hamstring bridge walkouts, and then a similar movement would be a TRX curl. So the hamstring bridge walkouts, these are better if it's not too wet. These don't require any equipment at all. Um, it's nice if you're working inside and you can use a roller or some sliders, but if you're outside, you're not gonna have access to anything like that. So for this one, we're just gonna get our backs to find position, bring my heels close to my bum, go into hip extension, and the big thing we want to make sure we maintain here is we want to make sure we maintain that nice relationship. So we want that straight line from our knees to our hips, sort of down to our armpits, nice and straight there. You don't want to drop your hips, but you also don't want to go into lumbar hyperextension. So we want to keep a neutral spine here. And all you do is you dig your heels in, keeping your abs tight. Come down. Okay, keeping my abs tight. And coming back up. Just like that. And a few of these would be really challenging and this is going to get isometric strength in multiple positions uh, so that's a nice one and then finally the last one we can do is on the suspension trainer so i have my suspension trainer set up here different handles um, are going to have different styles so you might and some of them you can just get your heels hooked into the stirrup right here 
Uh, for this particular one, that's not comfortable, so I have it on the arch of my foot. And it's very similar to the walkout. I'm just gonna hang out here, uh, make sure my abs are tight, spine is neutral, ribs are in. And for this one, all we do is we just come back and back like this. This is another one of those movements that can be really challenging, um, but can be really beneficial. And this has both a concentric and an eccentric uh, portion. Um, and this might be a really good option for a lot of people as well. In order uh, of difficulty, from most difficult to least difficult, it would be uh, probably a strict Nordic would be the hardest. And most people won't be able to achieve that. So you're gonna have a strict Nordic. Um, you can do the Nordics with some push-up assist. So try to maintain control for as much as you can. When you finally lose control, catch yourself and push out. Uh, from there, I do the Harup curl where you bend at the hips. You can try the isometric Nordic if people are quite um, close to getting the har ups where they just go out as far as they can, hold it for a few seconds, and then come back. Um, from that, if they're having issues with that, the next most challenging one would probably be the, uh, the TRX curls because those are a really tough movement. If the TRX curls are too tough, do some variation of the bridge walkouts. And then um, if the bridge walkouts are too tough, or if you just want to get higher rep stuff, or include it into a warm-up to get a good hamstring warm-up, you can just do the standing or the quadruped curls, emphasizing that squeeze. Um, and if you work on those, and if you do them regularly with your clients over a few months, you'll see really, really fast gains in this movement.